Hello and welcome back to another episode of Wasteland. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing the blind playthrough on the hardest difficulty, Supreme Jerk. This is episode number nine. We are still at two death only, so we are doing very well for ourselves. Uh, we got into a pretty heavy skirmish here to uh, get the Patriarch's equipment back, but unfortunately, Arrestus Dorsey now said that said rangers can't stand no more waiting. We're going in. Enjoy the show. Well, we're going to have a bit of a saying there. Wrong path, as far as I'm concerned. We need to go way more to the left. I like the overworld uh, kind of gameplay so far. Very well done. Not too many locations and sites of interest and since there are ways around all of these buildings, it's actually not bad at all. If I were to have a couple of uh, thoughts around this, I would potentially say we're almost too late. Good. Let's see if we can save anyone. Potentially not, but that was the price we were willing to pay for the greater good. Grenade, uh, we got a nice little heavy machine gun and some weapon modifications. I like what I'm seeing, but we already got a nice heavy machine gun. And we got some armor modding, evasion armor and combat speed. I think combat speed is always good. But let's double check if the guy who is requiring Comet Speed the most does have it. Yes, they do. Frontline all do have their Comet Speed. Perfect. Good, which brings us to a bit more leg armor for our heavy guy. Ramos. Ramos has uh, only... Mm, I don't know if we have enough hit points, but I think we're still going to be fine. Explosive barrels everywhere. That could be the biggest trap ever. All the guys are already gone. Now we're seeing a couple of corpses there. Not cool. You know, we do have Animal Tamer 5, don't we? So Doggo... Uh, you head back out and we are charming the night bite. How many? Yeah, way more hit points and 
deals a lot of damage. So we're good. What else? We do have typically a buff from uh, from them, right? Yeah, sneak attack. Strike like a wolf in the dark. Okay. He took everything, so I chose nothing. seems to be kind of the secret uh, way around. Unfortunately there is not much left here. Can you get up there? No. Oh wow. Toxic cell. Uh, once affected slow dripping toxin onto the weapon. 100% chance to apply a uh, poison, that's good. A couple of crafting components, but really not much else we can get from here. Like I said in advance, it sucks, but imagine it's a typical train dilemma, right? So you can save either X amount of people or Y amount of people, but you can never save all of them. If we wouldn't have gone to the other part, those crazy lunatics would have taken off their hats and implanted that on robots. Permanent increases automatic weapons by one. That is great. What's not so great is that the guy get got away with it. Um, not cool. Good. We got two people with automatic weapons. Maybe that's a book that we can use in order to clone. Apparently you can clone things. Maybe you can dupe items. Well. Sad to see it uh, go that way, but unfortunately we couldn't uh, save everyone. Why is our... Oh, I see. It's burning because it has so little hit points. I think we need to repair it. Just out of curiosity, I thought we had a lot of repair tools. Good, we'll repair it once we're at our target destination. For now, gotta push on. You have the morning full keening drool and fight a pack sitting together. Are they singing? Sneak up on them. The drools fail to notice you and you get in position time to strike. We could have avoided it, but 
I don't know. Ah, that might be kind of those overworld encounters that we talked about. Oh, oh, I see. Hostile encounter. Lots of them. 500 hit points. Uh, yeah, well, as I was saying, we wanted to, I think, repair. Repair the Kodiak. No, that only apparently only works when you're when you're um, somewhere else. So we got to play the hostile encounter now. Okay, my bad to a degree. All right, Murphy crouches. Uh, Hogbite moves over here, crouches. Oh, well, we have not even split the party yet. Okay, let's try that again. You go over here. Crouch, heavy weapons guy. Over here, crouch. Hogbite goes over there, crouch. Lucia helps over here, crouched. And... I don't know. They look quite terrifying with 500 hit points. Central stays in the center. Quan moves over here. And Ramos moves to here. Very good. Good. I think we now now we do have a bit of a better position. Now all we need to do is hit two of them with our nice little slowdown without getting anyone else in trouble. Bile Bomber. Well, that might as well be someone who has a range attack. Who knows? Hmm. Do we have the Kodiak? Maybe. Could hit uh, these ball bombers, could mark them before we do anything. Oh no! I am so stupid. Unbelievable. Oh wow. Good. Healed himself. Now combat is getting started. Never mind. 
Never mind, they found us, but at least. At least we can drive over them. Oh, the Kodiak. Always a pleasure to work with you. Couple of hits and let's continue to focus on this guy. Nah, can't hit anyone here. Not far enough. Just to be safe, let's heal up and we're just going to do a nice little overwatch trap. Good hit. Ice Wolf has special abilities. What did, what did he do? He scared them? It's too good to not do it. Kodiak needs to be repaired again. Can't shoot, but we can we could move. Okay, cool. Let's do the trick shot, 50-50. Central moves up and begins to pepper this guy. Nice hit, by the way. Good job, Central. Juan moves up as well. Ramos moves up. Good hits. And Murphy can't reach him. But Murphy could, uh, not Murphy, Hawkbite could move to here and prepare an ambush just in case he moves over. Oh yeah, and our ambush oftentimes crits and deals a lot of damage. Lost soul. Kodiak can simply kill this guy outright. 
2600 points of damage. That's insane. Good. Hit this guy. And a headshot. Followed by a normal shot. Oh. Well. Gotta learn not to stand too close. How long does it last? Wow, one more minute. Fabulous. Good. Well. We're still taking some damage, but I think overall we're fine. Couple of crafting components. The rest is utter junk. And I should not stand right next to them when they explode. Okay, so that is how those random encounters go. No further loot, nothing. Oh. Never mind. We just ma uh, got made whole for that whole encounter. What I don't understand is how can we repair the Kodiak? Hmm. Could I shoot at it? Yeah, I missed the Kodiak, really? No, that's 11 points of damage and not healing. There we go. We need the special ability. Sure, there are better ways to repair it, but... The Kodiak looks halfway decent. Return to nominal function. Was that a miss? Again? Okay, we're function. at back at normal uh, normal functions. Okay, cool. So we understood how random encounters work. Why would I try to bypass them with survival? That was free XP and a lot of other stuff. Maybe because it becomes cumbersome at some time. Alright, so I'm just double checking if we can work uh, with anything here, but apparently not, so we're going to go right into the bizarre. 
I thought it was a bazaar at first, but apparently it is called the bizarre. Please, I assure you. Okay, so just out of curiosity, how much crafting material do we have? 850, that's not bad. We could create a few armor kits for more hit points. But I think we found enough so far. Weapon, uh, weapon modifications, but they cost 80 each, so that's not good. Okay, what else do we have? Well, if we get LED metrics, I think the decoys are definitely worth it. Turrets appear to be a bit on the pricey side. Molotov we could create, but still that's 30 per Molotov. But then again, what do we want to do with it? I think we're just going to save uh, the crafting materials for now. First, sends a man dressed in an impeccable, clean, well-maintained suit. Uh, he bows with a flourish uh, as you approach, and without a pause, starts rattling off a practice spiel. Salutations and assorted felicitations. Welcome to the bazaar, the marketplace of the unusual. I have not seen you here before. Know this. The bazaar can be found underneath our feet, buried by layers of snow. Access is restricted to the lucky few who possess an entrance pass. You can purchase an entrance pass at the door from our esteemed hosts, the Monster Army. Or, if you lack the funds, simply find an established merchant to vouch for you. Okay. Uh, why would we want to get into the bazaar? Everyone goes in for their own reasons, but looking at you, I'm guessing you are the exploring sort, yes? The bazaar is replete in merchants of all kinds, selling weapons and armor you could not possibly get anywhere else. Up the ramp, you'll find the door to the bazaar, covered by a vehicle. My name is Ananda Rabindranath, Mannerite missionary, merchant, and your humble servant. I was assigned to answer any questions you may have. Felicitations. Hmm. Have you anything for sale? I have a variety of goods for sale that could suit your needs. But let's not barter out here in the cold. This way, friends. If civilization collapses, all of Colorado Springs will look like this. Chapter 1, on the proper use of etiquette. It is a common misconception that etiquette exists as a means of affirming one's social status at the expense of the uninitiated. That is, it serves as a barrier to keep the uncivilized apart from their betters. Of course, nothing could be further... The table before you is covered in various carefully marked containers, tool for mixing chemicals. to sell my dyes same as you I imagine the getting into the bazaar part not the dyes unless you do dyes which is totally cool by me if you do hi um what are those people doing hanging outside in the bazaar huh? they're hoping someone would sell them an entrance pass or help them get inside the bazaar's got this code you see unless you're a big shot flab can't do without you're not allowed to come in. Anyhow. Do you know anything about the refugee situation? Refugees? Don't know about that. I mean, everyone here looks like they're refugees. Have you seen us? It's cold here. Try Ananda. He's this really well-dressed guy. Comes out here a lot preaching... Um, 
Lab's uh, the leader of the bazaar. He's a big guy, which is why everyone calls him Flab, you know? It's kind of mean, but Flab doesn't seem to mind, so whatever. I guess. So long. Good. So we know what's happening here. The Great Gurn. Aha! I see you have come from afar. Well, your travels are amply rewarded. For you have reached the one and only, the seer of fortunes and teller of truths, the great Gurn. Never heard of you. He said, tragic, your memory must be failing you. But come, travelers, do you want to know your fortune? Tell us. Wisely chosen. Those who do not prepare for the future are clouds. To begin, you must think of your favorite color. Concentrate solely on the color. Let the color completely fill your mind. All right, ready. See an ocean of waves. Your color is blue. That's not the color. Apologies. <laughs> I was impatient. Uh, now I see you're riding the waves. You're not very good at that. Of course, of course. The story is not done. <laughs> It's not blue waves you are riding, it's blue ice. And the red sun, it is not you that moves toward it. It's the red... Uh, but then there is peace and you are surrounded by trees. Wrong again. Uh, it is not your fault. With time comes knowledge and with knowledge comes clarity. I must know more before we can continue. The Patriarch promises resources save our fallen rangers. Ah, the most noble of sentiments. The image begins to grow clearer. Now I must know, for what purpose have you come to the bazaar? We're here trying to solve an issue with refugees. Yes, yes, fascinating. It's all coming together now. Your noble intent will drive you into great danger, but also great opportunity. Ride the three-headed goat. Your problem just became your stepping stone. Seize the moment. Ah, uh, now I can clearly see you standing before a red balloon. The red balloon bursts without warning, and you stand covered in red blood. <laughs> That is uh, all I can see. Your path is hard, Maman. The fates have spoken to me. I must give you this key. May What's this key for? No use. The Great Gurn sits at the point in a distance, softly chanting in an unfamiliar language. Why aren't you inside the bazaar? Uh, Flab is a cabron who wouldn't recognize talent if it bit him in the belly. He claims the monster army already has some kind of mechanical fortune teller. But how could a machine possibly match my intuition? My gift? My panache? Beware the red balloon! Interesting. Definitely bizarre. That fits it very well. We're here for looking for people who smuggled refugees into Colorado Springs. Wisdom to keep one's mouth shut when one lacks courteous things to say. Truly, I find the very idea of smuggling people revolting. With that said, if I were a less discreet person, I'd suggest that you drive out to the old parking garage down the road to the north. Who knows? You may find your answers there. But of course. Good, he has rockets. I like it. But rockets are expensive. I don't like that. Okay, well, he does have normal stuff. Well, the no glow as well.
which can purge radiation. Luckily we're not radiated, so I suppose that's not a big problem. We got Six Fingered Larry here. Howdy strangers. Name Six Fingered Larry. Hunter. Though it seems you find me plumb out of wares. That's an interesting looking parrot. Is it for sale? Him? <laughs> you don't want him. Barrett's got a bit of an attitude problem. Tried to peck his way through a kid's skull the other week. If you insist, though, you'll have to talk to Polly yourself, because I got no say in what he's going to do. Why do you call yourself Six Fingered Larry? Who knows? I've only got five fingers on each hand. Same as anyone else. Maybe it's got something to do with the fact I'm good with my hands. <laughs> I'm not the sword who'd kiss and tell, though. Um, you know anything about a band of smugglers moving refugees Only around? That they make more money than I do, bastards. But to answer your question, nah, I'm an honest businessman. I don't waste my time with criminals. Why don't you try the Mannerite? Yeah, the, the one with the suit. He knows all about the local lowlife. I'm no local, but ask me anything you want. Want to get into the bizarre? Could you vote for us? I don't got the bona fides. Be seeing you. All right, Larry can't uh, vouch for us as well. That's unfortunate. I wonder, shall we just explore the area a little bit? Oh, nice. Great weapon mod. Let's see. Hit chance plus five percent. That is great. Cool. Couple of buried items. More money. Bomb hopper. Okay, whatever that is. Nice. 100 crafting component. Didn't we just see a bomb hopper here? Central shoots and hits the bomb popper as well as his own guy. Kills. If we make him slower, well, that would be a start. Nice, good frozen ferret. Fantastic. I don't know what frozen means, but I assume he is slower than before. Quan moves up. Takes a couple of shots. Uh, there. Not sure if I want to melee these guys. What Hawkbite can do though is 
let's get all the way here and ambush. Did Hawkbite just receive a massive hit? Just barely survived it? Oh, there are more of these guys. Capacitator, more junk. But we got a huge uh, mm, amount of scraps from here. Senor Bubbles, where you at, my yaso? The pigs are getting hungry. When I've got for a food run, got a little clock on. I'm bringing back now. Orale, I'll get the cleavers ready. Misses. All right, central. Hits, hits, hits. Continues to hit. There's a potential other hopper. Ramos moves over here. Lucia moves up, miss, and kill. Gotta be careful, I don't want these guys to explode. They seem to be coming out of nowhere. Come on, really? Okay, fantastic. If we can hack it, it can self-destroy it. Good. Gotta be careful. If these guys come to close, then they can deal some major damage. Wait, what? We got a utility item. I like that. We got a nice little utility item. And we are up to a thousand. That's not bad. Where's the utility item though? I saw it. I swear I saw it. Ah, there we go. Survival plus one. Which I think Lucia is the one that anyways has survival, so might as well skill it further. There's definitely something inside, but this might not be the... Oh wait, it's an inflatable gorilla, right? If it is an inflatable gorilla... Then it should easily be destroyed, right?
Okay, just in case there are some strange things happening. Someone has turned this inflatable gorilla into a frozen gargoyle, no doubt. Hopes of uh, scaring away on uh, scaring away unwanted guests. We have an ice pick. How how does that not go through it? This is definitely a very, very, very rich environment. Creepy doll gains bonus to all squad members. Are you kidding me? Is that a utility? Or is that a usable? Hmm. Creepy doll. It doesn't seem to be a usable item. And it doesn't seem to be armor either. But 15 con to everyone would be not too bad. Tell you what, we're running against uh, the hour. Uh, this here is a perfect time for us uh, to call it quits for today. So uh, that is the end of uh, today's episode. We're going to continue here the next time as this is a great exploration and then we're hopefully can take on the gang. Thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoy Wasteland uh, 3, then leave a comment and a like down below and let me know what uh, you think. And make sure you do that fast because there might be that creepy, creepy robot with a lot of explosives that uh, is killing you. Be, be, and it's only stoppable with hitting the like button. That's the termination switch. Take uh, good and uh, see you next time. Bye bye.